All right, let's dive into the next segment here. Uh, Rick's Corner, Simple Solutions for Common Questions. Rick, what's the topic uh, you've decided on for this week's webinar? So thank you very much, Jason. And yeah, this, this week's gonna be a little bit special, um, a little bit different. I mean, it's actually gonna be a special week. Uh, we have a special guest, Sherilyn, uh, is gonna be joining us today. Uh, we're gonna be going over a very common question that we have uh, and a lot of people bring it all, they bring it to our attention constantly. Um, so first off, Sherilyn, welcome. Super happy to have you here. Hi guys, I'm so excited to be here today. <laughs> all right, Sherilyn. So yeah, what we're gonna be basically talking about today are nine search result settings that everyone should know about. So Jason and, and Sherilyn, like we've talked about in previous webinars, um, member type of posts are broken down in different sections. And one that comes often um, is the uh, the search results section. So how would you go about editing the sidebar that shows up on, on that search results page? How would you go about changing some of those settings that are available for you, right? So well, what we're gonna be basically doing today again is that Sherilyn's gonna walk us over, over those um, those very useful settings. Great to have you here in the webinar, Sherilyn. I know this is your uh, first time with us, hopefully not the last. I'll go ahead and pass over the uh, presenter uh, sh screen to you. So we'll be looking at your screen now. All right, I just sent it over. You should be able to uh, accept that. And I'm pretty excited about this topic too because it's so basic, um, but there are, the settings are so powerful. So excited to see what you have for us today. Okay, so in order to edit the search results settings, we would need to go into the content and in touch with the edit post settings. And then today we're gonna to be going over how to edit the blog search results. So let's hit edit. And then we're looking for the search results design tab. Um, and then here we go, I have the page opened up to how a default web page opens up with the default settings, the default sidebars. Um, and then we can go through and change these things and see how it affects the site on the live end. So I was thinking we could start like the H1. I feel like this one's pretty standard. You know, website blog doesn't add any characteristic to your site. So you can always pinpoint exactly what you're going for. So in this case, we're talking about search results. You can change it. Website. So yeah, you want to basically tailor it towards your own website, make it a little bit more unique. I think that's a great place to use keywords also. Um, so if, you know, if you're a pet training website, you can say pet training news and ideas or, or something like that, rather than just calling it website blog. Exactly, and then it just, you can hit the target audience that way, make it more unique. Two, it just displays a little smaller results. I think it's perfect also if you are, you know, doing different, the website blog and then the member articles. You can always add extra text so that your visitors can differentiate what's the difference between the member articles and the website blog. Absolutely. That that secondary input there, the, the default H2, that's the second heading on the page. It actually serves multiple purposes. You brought up a great point, Sherilyn. You can explain what this section is about. Um, like a, a, a description with more words, maybe eight to, eight to 10 words. It's also great for search engine optimization because it's, again, it's another place to include relevant and related keywords to the page. Perfect, yeah, and then um, search results per page. So this one I feel goes um, hand in hand with the InstaLoad search results also. Um, you know, you can change, so right now we have four articles. One, two, three, four. Um, we switch it over. As you can see now, there's no, no, you know, text, no next page, no load more results, because currently it's set to nine results per page. But if we switch that over to like two, then we'll see that you know we'll have more options. And then it shows up. To load more results. And then if you don't have the um, install load, what you'll see, so we'll switch this off to no, if you don't have the VAP add-on. Okay. 
Oh. See, we'll get the little page. Okay. We'll work on the last page. Now, here's a good question. <clears throat> What's the benefit of showing nine or 900 results um, on the first load of the search results page? And, and I have to say, there's a couple benefits to showing less results, for example, 10 or, or 20 or even five in some cases. Um, one is the page will load faster because if there's images on the page, maybe for the blog post or whatever it might be, the more images on a page, uh, the longer it takes for the load to do its initial uh, loading. Number two is if you have pagination, which is are those numbers down there, uh, you're also getting more clicks. So people are clicking through your site and visiting more pages on your site, which Google loves. When Google sees that a website is getting lots of clicks from their website visitors, they know or they assume that the website is providing some type of value for the visitors, and that can help with uh, your rankings in Google search results. Um, lastly, the, the insta-load search results that Sherilyn disabled a moment ago and, and instead showed these numbers, uh, instead of getting loaded to the next page, like page two, the insta results will just um, reveal more results, which is great for the mobile experience. That's kind of how Twitter and even Google search uh, results work on mobile now. You don't go to a second page, it just says click to view more results. So that's good for a mobile experience right there. Exactly, because the, the page doesn't have to reload. It's just going to uh, display the next uh, set of results. Like an infinity scroll, so you don't have to really leave where you're at. Exactly. You don't have to reload the page all over again. It's just going to reveal the next nine or next five posts when you click that button. So the next is the post keyword search options. I think this one's a lot of fun. Um, so it comes by default. It'll search, you know, your title, the description, and the tags. Um, and then this brings up something that Jason mentioned earlier, where if you have a lot of images, if you have a lot of, like, blog posts, it will slow down your site. So an option you can also have is just to search by the title. So we can switch this over here. Um, so for example, when you're searching by title, the only results that will come up is if any of the words match the titles. So for example, modify. Oh, It'll just post up the article right away. It'll auto suggest. That one's great because you can kind of curate the, the how wide you want a search to be, whether it's, again, just the title or just the description or other um, metadata that's that's included in a post. Um, that's one of the options, right, the searching all the the metadata? Yeah, we'll show the, uh, the default one. Um, and this one helps a lot when the members aren't sure, like they don't remember exactly what's in your title. So, um, for example, this article right here, you how to edit default search results, that has the word permalink inside the article. If we weren't using the default option, when we search permalink, um, you'll notice that the website, the article shows up even though there's, you can't even see the word. Gotcha. So if someone wanted the most amount of results, um, which setting would they turn on in this, in this case? Um, the last setting, and this works the best if you have added custom fields to your blog. Uh -huh. Or any or any or any post type if you add custom fields so it'll not only search the title or description it'll also search any custom uh, fields that you've added for a post exactly yeah, and I, I didn't add any custom fields to these um, but Gosh. otherwise we would show the example um, but yeah I feel like the default does the best job unless you you know feel like the speed is an important skill gotcha and then here we have the page header page loop and the page footer. Um, so these, what they do is just control how the page works, how it's displayed, and what information shows up when you complete, you know, when you visit these pages. Um, and typically, unless you're a developer or have knowledge or you know know how to edit these, it's typically best to just leave them as they are. So this is when you're crossing the realm between like beginner who just wants to use the regular settings and then if you're a designer and you really want to dive in there and really make the look and feel of the of that page uh, your own. And then we have this, the restore default code for the member feature. Um, this one helps if you know you want to have the newest functionality available for the blog articles. If you you know feel like you go to the demo site and you see that there's this new little 
you know, feature on it, you don't have it, and you're wondering why, it's most likely that you don't have the most recent code available. So this is a great way to go in there and make sure your website's using all the newest functionality available. So, so Brilliant Directories has a repository of like a bank of all the default code for how the search results should look for the different post types. If you've done custom work on your search results page, would you want to use this tool, uh, the restoring the default code, Sherilyn? Um, no, because it would just delete all of that custom code. It would just keep what BD has and then anything else you've added will be lost. So if you want to do something like that, what I recommend is copying and pasting that code into you know, a Word document. Um, updating the code and then seeing how you can, you know, reestablish that custom code into the new settings. Gotcha. Perfect. Thanks. And then here we have the fun, the fun ones. The order results by, you know, you have plenty of options here. You can do random by title. Um, you can do. Let's try the alphabetical. We'll save that. Actually, th three times this week in the Facebook group that. Uh, there were questions posted and, and the answer was by navigating and showing them the order results by drop down here and, it, and we were able to solve their problem of what they were trying to achieve. Yeah, it just really depends on like uh, what you're trying to showcase with the business. Um, can you see, let's refresh this. You can see now they're all alphabetical, A, C, H. And then it's good if you have like events, you can do, you know, by start date, end date, you can do post IDs, uh, most recent, so it's you have a lot of options. Um, and then here we can change these sidebars. So right now we're just using the default, the website blog article search and the uh, joiner newsletter. And then, so these sidebars, the sidebar to use, um, you have the options, and these are the same sidebars found within the sidebar manager. Um, so you can do the post search results, which is the default, and that's the best one to use. We can go ahead and switch that just to see what happens and see the member profile page. So you can always go in and customize these to be different and then create it specifically for blogs or events, any feature you'd like. That's right. If you wanted to put specific banners in different sidebars and then use those sidebars for different post types, like you mentioned, events or property listings, uh, you definitely have the control there to kind of further customize the page. Uh, and I see you've added the, the sidebar that's on member profile pages here now. Yep. Just to show how easily you can change this over and it, the effects go right away. Um, so let's switch that over back to the search results. And then here's where we search, uh, pick the sidebar search module. So that would be, let's refresh this. This right here, this website blog article search, this little module. And then here we can pick. Again, plenty of options. You can, you know, instead of searching for the blog articles within the blog page, you can have them search for top and sub locations. You can have them search for other features by top categories, just to show how easy it is also. Yeah, I've seen a site where their main, main focus was searching coupons. So even on their blog section, they maintain the coupon search module there because that's the number one focus they wanted people to have on their website was that coupon search. Yes, you'll notice uh, here you can just, you know, if even when they're on the blog articles, if the blog articles are about how to do things or, you know, new restaurants opening up, if they see that, they can come in here and search for it, you know, location, oh, okay. I see an article here about this restaurant. Let me look it up on the site. Let's see if it's available here. So, and then the default one will always be the first option. And I also wanted to point out, if you want to scroll up here, for those of you that um, are, again, more for developers and designers out there, the H1 and the H2, also support both PHP and if you wanted to put widget shortcode in there, which opens up the possibility to make the titles a little bit more dynamic uh, based on searches that are happening. So you, you can use more than just plain text there. And then we've covered in previous webinars that page header, um, again, somewhat more for the designers and developers out there. The first box there for the code, uh, you can start the page, the search results, maybe with quick links or banner advertisements, or um, other content that you want to put there uh, that starts ahead of the search results. So there's really good control here 
for the page. And there's actually um, one more control that I wanted to share, Sherilyn. If you go to the design settings, uh, you can actually decide whether the sidebar is on the left or the right side of the main body content. Uh, or you can also choose to hide the sidebar altogether. If you go there and click on sidebar alignment, and then it's going to be the post search results. Uh, right now it's aligned to the left. We can go ahead and switch it to the right. And uh, let's see what that looks like. Perfect. So now the body content is on the left and the, the sidebar is on the right. Just depends what your preferences and styling you're using uh, for your website. Rick, do you have any final notes about uh, these these settings here, or Sherilyn? Well, the uh, there's so many there's so many settings there that um, one thing that I would do definitely would be, of course, figure out what you are aiming for, what's the main goal of your website, and stick to it, um, and then start and see how that goes. Don't don't. I mean, what I'm trying to say is that don't don't try to sit down and figure out what eventually your user might end up wanting to use your website for. Test it out. Get them to tell you. If they're not uh, happy with the sidebar that you're using, then this is how you go, go about changing it. And you have this functionality here. If they get you, give you feedback saying like on the mobile, I mean, I see so many results. It's so difficult to navigate. All right, so let me go ahead and, and set up the install load then to make, to make it easier for them. So there's a lot of functionality here, uh, but don't get carried away. That will be my advice. Uh, and then just launch it, get your feedback and work with the customer of your website. All right, guys, good stuff there. Um, well, Sherilyn and Rick, thank you so much for this segment. I think I learned a little bit, and I hope you guys enjoyed it out there too. Thank you, thank you. It was great. And thank you, Sherilyn. As, as Jason said before, we really hope this is not the last one. Definitely not. No, I hope to be a part of many more. <laughs>